So it's been a few months since the 2021 iPad Pros came out. And the iPad Pro aside from my phone is a device that I use every single day. I can appreciate it for what it does. But now we're kind of three generations into this new design of the iPad Pro. I've got kind of a love and hate relationship with it. And I kind of think I gotta split this one up. <laughs> That's right. Not again. It's me again, nerd. I caught it. See, I can, I can be cool too. Before I get into the video, I do want to take a second to thank our sponsor, Koei, and their pretty awesome Aquamega 100, but more on them later in the video. And I just want to jump right in from the get-go and show you the bench cores about how fast and beastly this new iPad Pro really is. Nerd! Uh, in case you didn't hear me, nerd! Nobody cares how fast your iPad is! You spent $2,000 on a tablet, good for you! Yeah, it's fast. Benchmarks don't matter. <sighs> Space, stop being such an Apple homer. How much did uh, Tim Cook pay you? You mind? I'm, I'm trying to make a, make a video here. So when you're done like making up excuses uh, for the 2021 iPad Pro, um, come talk to me. I'll tell you what you really need to know. So obviously there's other new and, and pretty awesome things about it too. I think one of the biggest ones for me, and I think one of the reasons people would upgrade to this, is the ability to watch HDR content and have it sort of do the entire HDR workflow. So one month later, this is where I'm noticing the difference with the 21 versus the 2020, and even the still awesome 2018 iPad Pro. HDR content looks really good on this. But I will say after watching a lot of HDR content, you kind of get used to how good it looks and you forget what it looked like on the 20 and the 18. Having said all of that, past couple years iPad Pros, it could kinda show HDR content, but it was like more or less just extended dynamic range. One of the really nice things again about the 12.9 2021 is that it's got the full brightness level required to display full HDR color gamut. And when it's firing, it still looks really nice. And I know there's some people out there who have been experiencing some pretty like bad blooming effects on the Big Daddy iPad Pro. I've seen those videos, I can sympathize with those people. I have not had those issues, so I can't speak to them. But certainly if you're looking to buy one, be aware of them and know that you may fall in that camp that could have them. So, I mean, it's a, it's a big old screen, right? The screen looks amazing and I haven't found much reason to really fault it. Not even the 11 inch version that still uses the kind of traditional backlit LCD and not OLED or mini LED. Even that still looks great. So as I got to about a year later on my 2020 12.9 iPad Pro, battery life started to die down a little bit for me. I became very aware that battery life wasn't as good as it was when I first got it. But one month later with the new version, battery life is still really awesome. Um, despite having the mini LED tech and having a ton of pixels being pushed, battery life is as good now as it was when I first unboxed it. So hopefully it will stay that way. Uh, when I am watching HDR content, if I do it for extended periods, you will see a little bit of a battery drain, but it's nothing drastic. If I'm watching maybe an hour show, it probably equates to maybe four to 6% uh, extra battery drain. All right, so um, it's got a Thunderbolt port, which for a lot of people is awesome. Uh, up to 40 gigabits per second throughput, which is insane for a tablet. Also means you can do a lot of photo editing on the iPad and batch import photos faster than ever, which for a lot of folks, is an unbelievable, awesome reason to upgrade to the new iPad Pro. Uh, speaking of photos, uh, Lightroom and Photoshop work great on both the new iPad Pro models. So the combination of either the eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM, depending on which model you pick up, I have the 16 gigabytes uh, in mine. We did test it though with an 11 inch that has the eight gigabytes of RAM. Both briefs are absolutely any sort of edit you could want, no matter the amount of layers that you threw at it. Uh, that also means things you'd expect iPad to be good at, it is good at, like multitasking. It's super snappy, right? You'd expect that. No matter how many programs I had in my, my multitasking window, whether they were really graphically intense programs or not, there's no issues here. No issues whatsoever with multitasking and app switching. But again, that was also true on the 2020 iPad Pro and that was true on the 2018 iPad Pro. So nothing new, it hasn't gotten hugely better, but it most definitely has not gotten worse. <music> 
So aside from the mini LED that made its way only to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, uh, center stage made its way to both sizes of the 2021 iPad Pro. And that's when kind of as you move, uh, the camera is gonna appear to move with you. Listen, I, I don't wanna make a feature that's new that people might use. I don't wanna make fun of it. But this is a feature that I've inadvertently been doing uh, on my laptops for four years and didn't even realize it. So no need for an ultra wide camera here, uh, only using the magic of like your arms. I mean, listen, if that's something that's important to you, it does work as advertised. It means absolutely zero to me. Uh, it's only available on the new iPad Pros when you're on a FaceTime call or other supported apps. It works. It's awesome to see it work. It's just not, just not something that I've been using all of that often. And all these things I'm saying about the iPad Pro, they might seem like small little changes, and maybe they are, and I think that's because the 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro was so good. It was so strong at absolutely everything that it just been small updates since then. This iPad Pro I use again every single day, and it's mostly for media consumption. With the 2020 iPad Pro when I bought the Magic Keyboard, I tried to pretend it was a computer and use it like a computer. And I did for a few months and it worked, but ultimately for my workflow, I was better off just having a actual real computer. Uh, but mostly I'm watching videos with my wife at night. We're on season three of This Is Us and it's always being watched on the iPad. Uh, in the morning, I'm checking emails on it. I'm replying to emails on it. I'm checking stocks, and crypto on it. It's mostly a, it's mostly just been sort of passive for me on how I use it. But when I do need to use some power things on it, I like knowing that it's there. I love the iPad Pro. It is probably my favorite bit of technology and what it can do and what it can enable, it does seem like a magic window. It just isn't much more magic than the magic window that came out a few years ago. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here telling you that to me, it's not a computer, um, but perhaps the best person to talk about the things that this iPad Pro is not is anti-John. So I'm gonna come back together as, as one John uh, for a second. So there are two things that every human being needs to survive. Uh, it is food and it is potable water. And to help make sure the water you are drinking is as pure and healthy for you as possible, the folks at Koei have their Aquamega 100 filtration system. It is going to triple filter your water, not once, not twice, but that third time, uh, so you know the water you are drinking is as safe and healthy for you and your family. So setting up filtration from a sink, so when you sort of turn on a tap, the filtration water actually comes through, can be a huge pain. Not only can it be expensive, uh, but also it can be messy. There's a huge potential for error. Uh, Koei has made that a very simple process. So I am the farthest thing from uh, a plumber, but getting this installed and working uh, was super easy. Plus, if you have any water concerns where you live, this can help alleviate them. And that's really what Koei aims to do with their whole line of in-home health technology. Just take the headache and hassle out of the way of making your home a healthier place to live. The triple filtration system is going to reduce contaminants, including lead, by over 99%. Uh, this is actually set up here in my kitchen, so now when anyone wants a drink of water, we're just gonna use this. There's no need to wait minutes or hours for your water to be filtered in one of those big jugs in your fridge. With its fast flow technology, just turn it on and you've got water in seconds. Perhaps one of the coolest things about it is it doesn't use any electricity, so no power necessary. And replacing the filters is also really easy. You just pull out the used filters and plug in a new one. So if you want to learn more, hit the link down below or go to kowaymega.com. It's also really reasonably priced at $249. So this is some real talk. Under no circumstance, 0.0, .0 circumstances, should you buy a hardware based on the promise a future software, and there's no better example than Tesla. And I am a chump of chumps. Uh, I bought the full self-driving package on my previous car that was about four years ago, and I got nothing. And then I got a new car last year. I'm like, you know what, this is the time. I'm gonna shell out the money for full self-driving because it's coming next week. Uh, well, next week is now like 13 months later, and I still don't even have access to the beta software. And I know that's Tesla, it's Apple, but it's, it's the same idea. Don't ever buy something on what could come. And when it comes to the iPad Pro, in all fairness, Apple never promised things that were going to come. Apple never promised Pro apps. 
Apple never promised that it was gonna be able to run Mac OS. Kinda we led that hype train. They never said it, but I guess foolishly, I kinda still believed it or at least hoped that it was gonna come. And we heard all this before the announcement of iPad OS 15, which, you know, was obviously a few months ago. The hype was going high. This is the year, ladies and gentlemen, that we finally get true pro apps on the iPad. Maybe we'll get a form of Mac OS. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna be able with Final Cut on the iPad Pro. The rumors were all but confirmed when we heard that the M1 chip was going to make its way into said iPad Pro. There was no way Zero way. It was not going to happen that Apple was not finally going to make this the dream machine that I think a lot of us have been hoping for. But we got widgets we can move around. That was uh, it's one of the big ones with, uh, with iPad OS 15. Don't like get me wrong. I'm pro widgets. I'm in the pro widget camps. They're helpful. They're, they're useful. But I don't think it was like the killer feature everybody was was waiting for. In fact, I haven't even installed the beta of iPad OS 15 on my iPad because it hasn't honestly hasn't been worth it. There's like nothing on it that I really want to try that badly that I want to risk, you know, just like breaking the thing. I promised you guys that I was gonna be like the real John, uh, the realest version of it. And listen, I wanted Final Cut on the iPad, but maybe my head was so far up my creator butt that I couldn't realize that maybe I'm in a minority of people who want Final Cut on the iPad because of what I do for a living. I would assume that Apple has done a lot of focus groups and a ton of research on like what's going to get people to buy iPads. And clearly it is not pro apps on an iPad. So perhaps I will remove my head from my rear section and realize that the iPad that we've got with the iPad OS that's coming is clearly all that Apple is going to make the iPad be and do. And again, they never promised it was gonna do anything else. We just kind of hoped. Outside of like the creative stuff I was hoping for, I think people were generally like excited for multi-user support, right? You and your wife or your girlfriend, your friend can use the same iPad, log in with their face, have their own home screens. And most importantly, and I don't wanna undersell it, their own ability to not only make their own widgets, but also move those widgets anywhere they want on their home screen. So like, I wanna be clear, I've tried it, I've tried to make it one. For me, the iPad is not a computer. No matter how much anyone wants to say it is, no matter how much you personally want it to be, it is not a computer. And for less money than I paid for my iPad, you can get a really nice M1 MacBook Air that does pretty much all the same stuff, but more in a computer way. And I tried to use the iPad again like a computer. Got the Magic Keyboard, I shoved out the money for it. I'm like, maybe this is the year that it can become a computer for me. And a month into it, I'm realizing it's just an iPad and I'm changing everything that I want to do to suit the iPad instead of just using a laptop that does things the way I expect it to do. And speaking of keyboards, I have the previous generation Magic Keyboard, so the one that came out with the 2020 uh, iPad Pro. And despite what Apple is going to tell you, it will work with the 2021 iPad Pro and it will fit with the new 2021 iPad Pro. Albeit it's not a totally perfect fit, but it's like perfect enough and it works. You don't have to spend the extra with 350 bucks for a new keyboard. So yeah, the HDR experience is great. And if you are watching a ton of HDR content, then by all means, get the new one. You're going to be super happy with it. But again, since I'm the honest one here, a few months later, the luster is worn off of the newness of the screen. And I'm kind of left thinking like, this doesn't do that much different or anything that much faster than my 2018 iPad Pro did or does. That device, so good and again so far ahead of its time and it left so much headroom that the 2020 and now the 2021 ipad pro are just kind of filling in very small gaps above it this whole like good and negative thing was was fun but i feel like the ultimate story with the ipad comes down to how you use it and what you perceive it's going to be and do the 2021 ipad pro for me was the realization that Apple is going to make this the best iPad 
that it can be, but is very much going to stay in an iPad lane. And that's okay. It's gonna be awesome for watching movies, great for road trips, awesome for traveling and being on airplanes. All of those things, it's perfect at. If you wanna send emails, maybe you wanna edit some photos, you wanna utilize the pencil, the iPad is going to be a perfect choice for you. But if you're expecting it to be more than that, if you're expecting it to do everything your computer can do, ultimately you're going to be disappointed. If you're expecting it to be a pro device, just by having a pro in the name, you are going to be disappointed. So I'm looking at the new iPad Pro, the 2021s, with a realization, maybe a, a bit of sadness, that this is the best the iPads are going to get. And I'm no longer expecting new things that Apple may or may not give. I am living now and in the moment. And in this moment, if you have a 2020 iPad Pro or you have a 2018 iPad Pro, hold on to those bad boys. Do not shell out the dough for the 2021 unless you need the screen or you're traveling like crazy and you need 5G built in, otherwise just tether from your phone. Those devices were so good and this one adds slightly bit more that it's really hard to justify. If you don't have an iPad and maybe you want to get one and you want to go into the world of iPad Proing, I'd still recommend picking up a used 2018 or 2020, but if you want to buy a new one, you're going to get the best version of the iPad that Apple has ever made with the best screen. And I know I joked about some of the camera features, but they're there and they work. And quite frankly, they work really well and they work as advertised. Just don't expect it to do more that Apple tells you it can do.